Hi, it is a pleasure to be meeting you all today. My name is uh, Luis Quevedo. I'm a former biotechnologist turned science communicator. I've spent uh, the last couple of decades uh, working either on television, uh, the press, radio, and of course teaching as well at, at university. Um, I've been asked to um, try to resolve a couple of questions today. However, briefly, I'll, I'll do my best. My two questions are, how do we deal with the science communication in times of deep uncertainty, such as the ones we are living now? And the second question, how can local and international organizations and also young researchers uh, do psychom in a way that is accessible, regardless of economic, social, political status, background, what have you? First, in times of crisis, slow is good, and explainers are good. I think we all can agree that uh, for the last few months, uh, COVID-19 has not only been a pandemic, but also, as the Director General of WHO said, it's an infodemic. Too much information, too little contrasting of that information, too fast, too confusing. So, in doubt, please hold your horses. Do not communicate if you're not pretty sure that you should be doing it. So let me share with you the one idea that you should um, treasure with regards to communicating anything, but science particularly. What do you want to achieve when you, when you do psychom? You're successful whenever the receiver understands, gets your message. The first commandment of psychom is know your audience. That translates into three key points. So it's really important. What do they know? What do they need to know? And what it's not necessarily to know? Meaning, you cannot do one size fits all for Psychem ever. Meaning, beware of hoovers of wanting to go very, very far. Uh, you're not going to turn them into scientists in a 30-minute talk. And three, less is more. If you nail down, if you uh, measure uh, very well the scope of your message, it will be better, believe me. So normally for the last three, four minutes that I have left, uh, they, they would be three hours. That's that's the minimal session that I do when I, when I teach psycho. But let me, however briefly, go to the main points. You wanted to communicate to different people. You are different among yourselves and your audiences are different. And different people, different folk have different ideas. Tom God nicely did it with this, this uh, cartoon. I, I love this cartoon. This cartoon is about what in communication we call framing. So the information about the information. Let me put you very briefly two examples. The first... Uh, when we talk about abortion, do we talk about ab abortion or pregnancy termination? Or otherwise, do we talk about the right to life or the right to choose? I, I presume that you all might be uh, familiar with this debate. Um, why I'm sharing this with you is because you, you clearly understand that you might be speaking about the same thing, but the perspectives, the viewpoints, the vantage points are very different. We must always keep that in mind. Why? Because our success depends on them understanding, beware of something that we tend to do because we want to do the most good. So if perhaps we're speaking about vaccines, we want to address the concerns of the anti-vaxxers. But that's unwise. What's wiser in Psychom, it's to target people that's closer to the, the, the normal distribution, to the center of that distribution, because we all win if we displace, if we push forward a little bit that distribution, right? So if it inches forward, we all win. And that's very different from attacking those opposing you. So try not to attack those opposing you. Meaning it's easy to move the green guy to one side than the red guy. Another thing that's really interesting is the words we use. In short, from esoteric to exoteric, we, we need to use a language, a lexicon, that it's common to uh, the, the more, the merrier in this case, right? So try to avoid, you know, uh, technical jargon. Try to avoid uh, too elaborate, too baroque uh, phrasings. Try to be simple. 
try to be straightforward and try to use simple words. Those go a long way in being understood, therefore, to your success. And the final thing would be never forget that good storytelling, good storytelling is the Trojan horse of wisdom, data, science, information, what have you. We are very good at retaining and understanding and internalizing stories. So whenever you can do that, reach out for that story. Now, why bother in transforming, in adapting your psychon to the audience, to their narrative desires, to their lexicon and not yours? Well, easy, because we do have a negativity bias. We all do. Meaning, Bad experiences are far worse than good experiences. And when it comes to psychom, every failed attempt at psychom, I believe it's really hard to compensate with good ones. Now, recap. It is hard to make up for bad experiences, so please always take the time. Don't be rushed. Don't do, do slow psychom. Don't do fast psychom, please. Think about the audience always what they know, what might need for their explanation, and the details you can freely ignore it because they are not relevant to moving that normal distribution, inching it to the right place, to, to closer to science. And carefully, carefully, carefully always select your target. Um, now, most importantly, if I can add one final thing, do show and do use emotion. And do show your values, because humans as we are all, it is hard to trust people who have no values. And one of the things that the COVID-19 crisis has demonstrated, I believe, is that when science tries to play it as only a technocratic force without setting values clearly, openly, I think we lose we lose definitely the support of a large swath of society that cannot empathize, cannot feel that we are true, that we are the real thing. So please, do not, do not be too, um, too academic, too objective, too cold. Use your emotion, use narrative, address people and talk to them. You know, your success depends on them understanding you. Thank you.